Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Will I hate it? Will I love it? I don't know. Okay. Okay. <gasps> oh. <gasps> oh. Oh. Hello. I have a very exciting package that just arrived. I think it's exciting. We will see in a moment. And um, I thought that I would show it to you. I don't know what adventure this arrival is about to take me on, but I thought I would at least film this and maybe it will never get seen. Maybe it will change my life and um, I will never stop vi filming videos like this. I don't know. So here it is. I was really confused at first when I um, went out onto my front steps and saw this package sitting here for a um, tool of some kind. Yeah, I don't even know what type of tool it is, but I was like, what the heck? Where's my package? Because it was already late. Um, not the seller's fault. The It just got hung up in the mail. Um, and I was like, what the heck? Did my husband order something? No, it's just a reused box. <laughs> Okay, so let's backtrack for a second and talk about what the heck is in this box. Um, I, at the time of filming this, had recently been very sick and I basically sat in my bed and watched spinning videos on YouTube forever. One of the channels that I had watched a lot of was Tashi of Stitches and Starlight and they talk a lot about processing raw wool. So, if you can see where this is going. <laughs> In my sickness, um, I got obsessed with the idea of processing my own wool. And I almost bought, uh, I almost bought like nine pound fleeces um, and decided maybe that's not the best idea considering I have no idea what I'm doing and if I will like this or not. Uh, so I joined the Raw Wool for Sale Facebook group and um, that was also a recommendation from Tashi and I found a little itty bitty half pound fleece. Um, this I think was like the fleece itself probably was more than half a pound originally but I think the um, the owner of the sheep has taken out like a lot of any of the bad stuff and just left the the highest quality fiber in here. So let's open it and then I will tell you about the sheep that it came from. Okay, so I cut open the box. I can't wait any longer. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Will I hate it? Will I love it? I don't know. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So there's just a little note that says thanks. And also this is a, um, shave them to save them breed, which I will show you in a moment. So I don't know if, I think this might be the, shave them to save them sticker. I asked for a sticker and I, this is a sticker so I think this might, might be it. So anyway, okay. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done this before so I'm sorry. This seems really messy. Um, this came from Patchwork Farm and Fibers which I actually didn't know before. Um, the seller was just, you know, using their um, Facebook account and not like a business account so I just knew their regular name. Um, so that's cool. Now I will definitely go look them up, look up their website, give them a follow, all that kind of stuff. So I have a Jacob sheep and it is from, it came from Georgia and it was um, sheared, I believe. No, sent out on, yeah, what day is it now? Today is May 13th. So it must have been it was sent to me on May 8th. Oh my gosh, I just, I feel like I am, I am, I, am, I don't 
don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm doing. This feels like I'm filming my very first video ever because I just like don't even know. I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do with wool, with fleece. What do I do? How do I do this? Oh my gosh, I'm making a mess. If you could see my feet, like nothing to do with the wool. I'm just... Okay, let's open this really quick. Okay. Oh my god, it's really in there. It's really, really in there. I probably should leave it in the box, shouldn't I? Okay. This is ah, a Jacob Fleece. Sorry, I mean, their fleeces are sent in, in plastic, typically, so there's gonna be crinkles. Oh my god, look at it. Oh, well, that stinks. Okay. <clears throat> yep, mm -hmm, that stinks. I mean, it doesn't, like, it smells like a sheep. It smells like a farm because that's what it came from. So, like, it's not like it smells like there's something wrong with it. It just smells like a sheep. And, <coughs> excuse me, that cough is not from the sheep. That cough is because I was, I'm still recovering from being sick. But look at it. Oh, my God. Okay, my battery's dead. Or about to crap out of me. So I'm going to stop this for right now. And I will come back and tell you the story of the sheep in a moment. Okay, we're back. My camera desperately needed a little bit of battery and I was hot. So I took off my sweatshirt and now I am ready to tell you about my little sheepy. If I can find the picture, there it is. Okay, so this is a Jacob sheep. If you um, are familiar with sheep and you saw the business card with all of the sheep that have the horns on them, you might have already guessed that this is from a Jacob sheep. They have wild horns and I think they can grow up to like six horns, which is, I don't know, it, it looks a little silly uh, if you ask me, but they're very cool. So this fleece came from a lovely sheep named Nettie and this is the description that was posted with this fleece um, that I just thought was adorable. So it says, Nettie is a Jacob Sheep U and has high luster medium fleece. It is silky with a pretty handle and a strongly defined crimp. Now I don't really entirely know what that means, but I would say that it does definitely look like it has a lot of crimp. I don't know. Anyway, the next part is what got me. It says, a very small amount of VM, mostly from Nettie's three-day adventure when she roamed the mountains of Northeast Georgia, accompanied by her sister and her dog. Like, what? What? This little sheepy went on an adventure with her sister and her dog, and I kind of really want to know what that story means. Um, I want to know more about it. It's just, it sounds so cute. Um, so, yeah, look at, okay, so this is a really, really crimpy looking lock. Look at this. Super crimpy. I think that's focusing. I hope it is. Anyway, I'll get better at showing fleece, or uh, maybe I won't if this is the last time I ever do anything with fleece. I don't know. So, I think, I'm not sure if I'm going to process this immediately or if I'm going to leave it for a little while. I can't stop looking at it. Ooh, there's there's some sticks in here. I mean, not much. It definitely does not have much VM in it, um, which is awesome. So I don't know if I'm going to process this now or wait. We are going on vacation soon. So I'm torn between like, oh my gosh, I'm dropping wool everywhere. I'm torn between like, do I start it? and then have to stop to go on vacation? Or do I just shove it back in the box and wait until I get home? I mean, will I be able to wait another like two weeks before I do this? Doubtful, if I know myself, doubtful. But I have so much to do this week, I don't know. I've done a little bit of research, I, have learned a lot about scouring and processing fleece. However, now that there's a fleece in front of me, I'm like, oh my gosh, do I remember anything? So I think what I'm gonna do is, um, as I'm getting stuff done this afternoon, I'm gonna have on some videos so that I can learn more about scouring 
and then we'll see. It's supposed to be absolutely beautiful weather today and tomorrow, so I feel like it would be a really good time to scour and let the fleece dry out in the sun. But we'll see. Whatever happens, I will take you along and we'll see how it goes. Okay, I took everything outside into my driveway because, um, sorry about all the road noise you're probably gonna hear, but I wanted to like spread the fleece out and take a look at things and like it's already been skirted so I really don't, I don't need to be picking out any debris at the moment. Um, but I, I don't know, I just, I've never done this before so I wanted to take a look at it outside. Uh, so I spread it out on an old towel and I am now going to start scouring. Um, so I have decided, um, I've seen online some people saying different things about if they like to soak their wool before scouring or not. Um, and I've decided I'm going to try it. I'm gonna try and soak this. Um, a lot of people say that they soak it overnight. I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to soak it for, I don't know, maybe an hour or so. Um, basically, I'm gonna set it up to soak and then I'm gonna go film a video. Uh, and then when I'm done with that, I will come back and begin the scouring process. So, um, this is so much fun already. I'm enjoying myself. My hands are coated in lanolin and they feel really nice, actually. Um, so I have this, oh yeah, no. Okay, hang on. <clears throat> I have a pot that is just full of cool water and I am going to plop the fleece into a, oh my God, I'm sitting, sitting on it. <laughs> plop the fleece into a laundry bag um, so that I can easily take it in and out of the water and um, I'm just gonna set it up to soak. There's, I have no need to be outside to do this, but um, I just figured, I've never spread out a fleece before, so I didn't know what I was getting myself into, and so I figured I would just come out here to do it and um, leave it out here while it soaks. There's really, it's just cool water. It's not cooking. It's not like trying to maintain any temperature or anything, but whatever, I'm out here, so. We're gonna do it. Okay, here we go. Okay, friends. <laughs> well, that was embarrassing. I'm so excited. I've been having so much fun. I am almost done processing this lease. Um, okay, so here's what I did. Basically, I did not film all of this because it is not attractive <laughs> and I am just learning and so I kind of just wanted to have like some moments of being in the process myself and not really like worrying about filming at all um if this is something that people want to see and I ever do this again I'm happy to try and be better about taking people along on the process but I really just kind of wanted to be in the moment and figure it out um, alone <laughs> without you, sorry. But here is what I did. First, I soaked the yarn. Um, I soaked it for about an hour, not yarn, the wool. Um, I soaked for about an hour and a half in like room temperature water. Um, no soap, no nothing, just let it soak. And I have to say that um, after watching a bunch of scouring videos on YouTube, um, yes, when I took the fleece out, the water was quite dirty, but I have to say it wasn't that bad. It was not nearly as bad as some that I have seen. So um, I was pretty hopeful. I felt like it was pretty good. Then I did two 10 minute soaks um, in the hottest water that I could get out of our tap 
Uh, I put Dawn, I used Dawn dish soap, and I probably put in a little bit too much, to be honest. Um, but I used Dawn dish soap, hottest water that we could get, and I stuck the fleece in, fully submerged it, um, and left it for 10 minutes. Took the fleece out, repeated with a little bit less Dawn. Um, again, 10 minutes, as hot as I could get it. Uh, and then I started rinsing. So, um, no one told me to do this. I just, like, this is just something that I made up. So basically, when you're working with fiber, you want to make sure, like, the worst thing that you can do is have it go from extreme temperature to extreme temperature, hot to cold or cold to hot, because it will felt the fiber. So typically you want to let the fiber and the water that it's in come down to room temperature before you do anything with it, because if it's hot, um, you risk felting it if you agitate it. So what I did with each of the rinses was I had it, I had the rinse like just the tiniest bit cooler than the one before it. Um, just as a kind of way to, to like decrease the temperature of the wool so that it would come down to room temperature a little bit faster and I wouldn't have to wait so long. I don't know, I just made that up. But it seemed like it worked. So I did three 15 minute rinses. I tried doing two and so that was just soaking the yarn in hot water. Again, like I mentioned, a little bit less hot than the previous one. Um, soaked for 15 minutes. Uh, I did that twice. And then um, I tried to take the wool out and to put it through a salad spinner. But there was still quite a bit of um, soap suds that were coming out of it. So I did one more rinse. And by that time, I was at like mildly hot water um, and I let that sit for 15 minutes. I was also doing this all outside so um, there was like a breeze and I feel like that kind of helped the water cool down a little bit faster than if I had been doing it in a more controlled environment. Um, so after the third 15 minute rinse everything was pretty much room temperature. I took the fiber out. I split it up into smaller chunks and put those through a salad spinner to get a lot of the moisture out. <sighs> that is a an amazing investment because um, it really, really, really helps things dry faster. So I did that and then I just laid it out on a towel outside. It was a beautiful day so I laid it out um, and let it dry outside. It was, I would say, 90% dry by the time it got it was starting to get dark out, so I pulled it inside, laid it out on my uh, blocking mats overnight so that it could dry the rest of the way, and it was beautiful and fluffy in the morning. So I was left with, I actually don't have very much left anymore, um, I was left with fluff that looks like this. So let's see. Trying not to get dirt all over the place because there's still quite a bit of VM in there. But this is what I was left with. These kind of fluffy, it feels very, very clean, um, smells good. There's like, I mean, there's VM because it's a sheep, they live outside. But it felt incredibly clean after I um, scoured it and let it dry. And then I have been taking it and using a flicker brush. So um, basically you take a lock and I learned this technique from Trish at Fiber Love Diary. I will try to link the video if I can remember which one it was where Trish shows this technique, but you basically want to hold the lock um, Hang on, sorry. I want to pull that down a little bit. Okay, you want to get everything lined up. Give it a twist because that will just help you hold on to the fiber and keep it from coming out. And then I'm not going to do this inside because um, I have my nice 
uh, I have like, I just filmed a podcast, so I have my brand new knitting projects below me and I don't want VM all over them, but basically you just flick, flick the tips um, to fluff things out. VM comes flying everywhere and then you flip it around and do the other side. Uh, and do I have something on my nose? Sorry. I feel like I, yep. Okay. There's a little, little uh, piece of hair on my nose. Uh, I think from when I was showing the wool on my podcast. Uh, okay. So you do that and then what you get is oh, this. Look at how pretty this is. Look at how beautiful. So, um, yeah, I love it. It's so soft, so squishy, so bouncy. I cannot wait to spin with this. Um, I do have to say, I feel like I am creating a bit more waste than I should, could, I don't know. Um, because I think I don't have a ton of locks that like really maintained their structure. And I think that flicking is probably best for locks that have maintained structure because you want to be holding them and flicking the ends. And otherwise you get, you're just like pulling out perfectly good staple lengths and they like turn into waste. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do is hold on to my waist and one day I will, sorry, one day I will get some hand carters and, um, and maybe I will attack the waist again and see if I can salvage anything from it. I don't know. We'll see. I'm making up a lot of this as I go along. But anyway, I have very, very little left to process and I'm very excited and I cannot wait to spin it. I'm thinking that I might try and spin from the fold. I've never done that before. So is that risky to try a new technique? But I feel like I have all of these like clumps like this. And so if I do a like regular long draw or like sh short backward or forward draft, I'm gonna like just be constantly reaching for new clumps. I don't know. But I feel so I feel like I feel like the fold might be fun. But do I wanna try something new? I don't know. And um, asking you is no help because by the time you see this video, I will be done with the yarn. So you answering will do nothing for me, but that's okay. Um, I'm really excited to see how this works up because we have a few different colors here. We have like some grays. Uh, there's not very much gray, but a little bit. There's like maybe 10% white. And then we have this black with the sun bleached tips. I'm really excited about that. So I don't know what I should do if I should just try and like blend things together and make things really like heathered or if I should spin all the white separately. Again, me asking you is doing nothing because I will have made this decision by the time you see this video. But anyway, I'm so excited. It's so pretty. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait to spin with this. I cannot wait to finish processing it. I'm so close to being done. I can't wait. There has been a development. Um, I got a drum carter. I got a really nice drum carter. Um, this is an Ashford drum carter. It is the wide version. And I need to stand up because my knees hurt. Um, I got it used. I got an amazing deal. It might be a little crooked, but whatever. Um, my drum carter has barely been used and it was an amazing deal. It just like fell into my lap. I could not, not get it. I needed to take it home with me. So anyway, yeah, we are so crooked. 
whatever. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, I got too excited and I made some bets. Uh, so, they're sitting up here. I got too excited and I was like, so my plan was, I first the first thing that I did was I took all of the waste that I had from my flicking adventure, which to be honest was not all like waste waste, like official waste, because there were some times that I just like couldn't hold enough of the lock in my hand and flick it and so I was kind of just like throwing it into a pile because I just couldn't grab it enough so it wasn't really waste fiber it was just like I couldn't make the process that I was using work for it so the first thing that I did on my drum carter was take all of that and make it into a bat because I figured you know I'm just learning let me see how it goes if I screw anything up I don't care as much about this fiber. And then I was like, okay, let me just, I'll just do that. And tomorrow I can make my real bats with the flicked fiber and, um, and I can show everyone on a video. But then I was having too much fun and I was like, okay, well, I'll just do like a little bit. I'll just do like a little bit more to see how it goes. And then I was like, okay, but there's like only a little bit left. So like, I'll just do a little bit more. So basically I made, I made the whole, the whole sheep, the whole fleece into a bat or multiple bats. And I didn't show you a single step of the process. So sorry about that. Um, basically what happened, this is hard <laughs> to hold both of these. Um, so this, I did not weigh anything before making the bat. I just decided to make a bat and see how much would fit on the carter. And I made this, which is about two and a half ounces. And then I made, I was like, well, let me just do the rest of it. And I made this, which is about one and a half ounces, I think, roughly. Um, so yeah, they don't match, but whatever. It's fine, because they're all going to get spun into the same thing. And... Speaking of me doing things and not taking you along for the ride, I spun up the other bat that I had from the waist fiber already this morning. Oops. So I will try and get better about um, taking you along for the ride. I think what I'm going to do, I the waist bat has minimally more like a little bit of neps not much it's really good it mostly came out fine but it's got like a little bit of neps because there were just some um some smaller like uh second cuts and stuff that might have gotten uh in there somehow and stuff like that but I think what I'm gonna do is take that one and this one because that one is also like a little bit less than 1.5 ounces so I think I'm going to spin the two tiny bats onto one bobbin, the big bat onto another bobbin, and then ply them together. And I think it will be fine. There might be a little, a little tiny spot in the yarn that feels a little bit more, um, like bumpy, neppy than others, but I don't, I don't care. This is for fun and to learn and to figure out how to do everything. So, um, stay. There we go. So I don't care. I don't care if it's not perfect. Um, to be completely honest, people keep asking me what I'm going to do with this yarn and the more I think about it, the more I feel like I don't want to make anything with it. Um, I think that this is going to just be a special skein of yarn that I probably put up on my wall and um, just love <laughs> uh, and can just say that this is my first you know, fleece that I fully processed myself and spun up and everything. Um, I think that's probably going to be it. But also, while we're here and we're updating, um, full disclosure, I got some more fleeces. Um, there's actually several standing, sitting on the floor underneath me. Um, but this one is the one I'm showing you because this bag used to be full. 
of fiber. And as you can see, it is not currently full. That is because I scoured half of it yesterday and um, started picking it today. And I will probably be playing with it later on on my drum carter. Oh, and my lovely, lovely friend Mac of Mac Die Conley got me a blending board. So I am going to try to um, play with both of those later today, I think. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to do too many things at once and I'm like talking while moving around and stuff. Um, so what I did today with this white fleece, um, this sheep does have a name, but I cannot pronounce it. I did, where is it? Holy cow. That, that fleece was vacuum sealed, and let me tell you, when you undo the vacuum seal, that, uh, I mean, I, like, right now it wasn't vacuum sealed, but it initially was vacuum sealed, and, um, wow, the sheep smell that comes out of that is, like, whew, everywhere. Anyway, this is the name of the lovely little... Shetland sheep that I am currently in the middle of Sorry, I keep doing so I'm currently in the middle of processing. So what I did today. I still have This fleece was is 1.5 ounces. No one pound five ounces. Sorry one pound five ounces. I scoured about half of it and then I today uh, weighed out about three ounces to pick so I did that today and what my plan is for later today maybe tomorrow whatever whenever I have time I'm going to play with my drum carter and my blending board I want to try and do two ounces for my drum carter and I think I should be able to fit one ounce on my blending board based on um like seeing what other people have done online so um, I've never played with a blending board yet, so I think that will be really fun to do. So I want to try and do a two ounce bat on the drum carter, and I want to try and do like a, just a, a small bat on the blending board so that I can try and just see how it works, see how I feel about it, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the plan. And I will continue keeping you updated on Nettie's spin I promise I swear I hope um, I might try to get this smaller bat spun up tonight as well so then I can show you the um, bobbin that has all of the yarn on it um, we'll see I know that's pretty ambitious to do tonight is two bats make two bats and spin one bat but um, Today's also my birthday, so I'm doing whatever I want today, and I feel like playing with my fiber. Um, okay, so this has been a long enough update. Uh, I did not want to film at all today, but I felt like I had to come on really quickly and give some kind of update because I knew if left to my own devices, suddenly Nettie would be completely done before I even updated you on anything, and I felt like... If I did not show you these bats right now, they would be gone and turned into yarn and you would never see them. So anyway, I'm going. Um, by the time this goes live, you won't have access to it. But right now there is a sale going on for my birthday and I hope a lot of you are taking advantage of it because uh, I love running sales or doing free patterns and stuff. I love doing that. It's a horrible business model to just give away free patterns every single time something exciting happens, but I love it. I love to make people happy. So I hope some of you out there managed to take advantage of the sale. And if you did, tell me what pattern you got and let me, uh, let me know when you start working on it. Send me some pictures, whatever you like. Anyway, I'm gonna go, well, wash my hands because that fleece is dirty and then I am going to um go play with my fiber 
and get some birthday drinks and dinner. Goodbye! This is the jankiest video ever because um, I just filmed my uh, reading wrap up and I didn't even um, I didn't even feel like adjusting the height of the tripod and I'm just sitting here squatting. Um, but whatever, it's fine. I did my first bobbin. I'm so excited. It's so good. I love it. Oh my God, Nettie, you are a beaut. So um, I finished this. I'm actually almost done with a second bobbin and I cannot wait to get it applied. I'm probably gonna finish the second bobbin and apply it tonight if I'm being honest. Um, I love it. I love it so much. I can't wait to come back and show you what it looks like plied. Oh, and also, hang on one second. The blending board um, did not work. Uh, but that is a, it's a, it was a me thing. Um, it was definitely a me thing, not a blending board thing. Oh God, I just, ugh, darn it. Um, it was a me thing. I put way too much fiber on there and I was just like packing it on, seeing what would happen. It didn't work. Um, I will try it better <laughs> with um, different techniques at some point in the future. Uh, but so then I took the stuff that I had made a mess of off of the blending board and I made it into a little one ounce bat on my drum carter, which, oh gosh, look at how fluffy it is. And then, um, so I just, I just put this down next to a plant and got like a bunch of little plant VM stuck into it. So if you see any VM, that's what's going on. But then I made a two ounce bat. Look at this, this is a cloud. This is an absolute cloud. I can't believe it. It's like I reached into the sky and got a cloud. So cool. Anyway, that's my update for right now. My back is starting to hurt from squatting, so bye. Nettie, it's done. I'm in love. I'm so in love with her. I'm so in love. Okay, um, so I spun her on my shacked sidekick. I spun woolen, um, kind of, Continuous back mostly um, sometimes went into long draw. Uh, and then I plied it together on my um, uh, EEW6. Uh, that's what I use for all of my plying now. It's just so much faster. This is just a regular old two ply, but there is nothing regular old about it. It is perfect. I I'm so in love. Um, I got about 282 yards and I love it. I haven't actually checked my wraps per inch yet. I would say looking at this it's like a DK, heavy DK. I don't want to say worsted, it's a little lighter weight than worsted, but um, but yeah. Oh. I love it. I love it so much. This was so much fun. This was the best experience ever. Could not have asked for a better way to start my fleece processing journey. I think if I had started with a different fleece, I would have been discouraged and disappointed. Um, for instance, I am still working through this white fleece that I showed you. Um, and it's going well. This has all been picked. But it has a lot of VM and a lot of second cuts, which is unfortunate. Um, and I don't think I would be able to successfully use my uh, flicker brush, which now I, I don't know where that is, but I don't think I would successfully be able to use my flicker brush on this. So I, I'm having to do all of the picking by hand and it's fine, but you know, it it's a lot of work. So I think if I had started with that as my first fleece, I would have ended up really discouraged. So thank you so much, Nettie, for being the truly amazing little lady that you are. I am so in love. This was an amazing experience. I had the best time and I can't wait to continue doing more and more of this. It was so much fun. 
and I hope you enjoyed coming along on this journey with me. I know I didn't go into too much detail uh, because I was learning too, so I didn't really feel like I could talk about what I was doing with any kind of authority because I was still figuring it out. So if you would like to follow along on another processing journey where I go into a little bit more depth um, and talk more about what I've learned, let me know. But thanks for coming along. Uh, Nettie and I wish you well, take care of you, and I will see you later. Bye.